to this week's episode of Guacamole Theory, where we discuss current trends in social and cultural theory. Today, we're going to be discussing two texts by Giorgio Agamben and one by Jean-Luc Dalton. Sopere Wuhan, the coronavirus is probably the only thing which everybody is in the whole world is talking about right now. So it is a very topical uh, discussion point, maybe something which has been done to death, but we hopefully can have something new and interesting to say about it. Exactly. Yeah. So far, Wuhan uh, yeah, is an ebook. Yeah, you can find the link below. Yeah, it's a compilation of different uh, texts from uh, different uh, social and uh, cultural theories that have come out in the past uh, two or three months. Uh, it begins with uh, one text from Giorgio Agamben. Then there's a response to that text by Jean-Luc Nancy. There's another text by Slava Zizek, who everybody knows about. And further text by Giorgio Agamben. Giorgio Agamben is an Italian philosopher that has looked into uh, the state, uh, the, the relation between the state and the citizens. I think, uh, well, is the first one that it's on, on the list of texts, the text organizing the chronological order. It's probably worth mentioning that the title of the text is called La Invención de una Epidemia. The Invention of an Epidemia. In the text, uh, Giorgio Damen basically describes the implementation of the first uh, policies by the Italian government restricting uh, social contact and mobility in the country. Uh, he's concerned with, with the creation of the state of emergency, right? And part of this concern, I would say, it was not just in Italy, but across the world, on, is based on previous experiences where the state of emergency becomes a, the new normal. Usually, the state of emergency is characterized by the possibility of the government to enact law. So to bypass parliament or congress, it can be seen as a, as, as a type of a, or a power grab. The first thing which really strikes you when you read it is, well, how much things have changed already. We're currently in close to the end of April. So the end of February is now almost a world away in terms of what's happened in the developments in the coronavirus, COVID-19 issue. And it's really kind of shocking to see what people were thinking and saying and writing at the end of February and how much things have changed, how quickly things have changed. I think one thing which is important to mention is that the title of the text is La Invención de una Epidemia, which in English is The Invention of an Epidemic. And something which strikes me is what you just described uh, sounds very reasonable to ask whether states of emergency give governments too much power and whether that power is being abused. The question, the way that Agamben presents it is that the epidemic is perhaps made up an invention. And I would say that's a lot more controversial than the original question which you just mentioned in the same way that questioning the existence of an epidemic which is currently by statistics killing thousands of people around the world every day might be seen as very controversial. That's it, one can also raise a question on when there are uh, fake news, right, or a totalitarian state without uh, free media, without free press, uh, how much the state can fabricate uh, the illusion of a crisis, or cover it up for, the, for political reasons. I think Agamben is, is, is raising the question, right, is, is the a state of emergency justified for uh, the beginning of this uh, epidemic? It's taking it one step too far to talk about the invention of an epidemic. I mean, you can talk about manipulation of the news and manipulation of the media. You can talk about exaggeration. You can talk about panic mongering. Um, but the question is, does all of this mean that the epidemic is an invention? Uh, well, within the humanities and social sciences, we have a tendency to say that everything is a construction because language and words uh, create things in a different way to how or they might exist in the real world out there, if the real world out there even exists. But, um, but this, is a, this is a really complicated point of cultural theory to say that things only exist as they're created through, through human discourse. Right, or by, by social interaction, social practices. So here, yeah, is. Yeah, it's not called the creation of an epidemic, though, is it? It's the 
and the Shing Dimension. So it, it implies a divine intention. But one of the things which becomes clear is that the things which the government is saying is that the government is using this to gain control, that this is made up, that this is just to scare people, are the same kinds of things which, for example, right now, people in many parts of the world are saying, people such as Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil, um, uh, certain groups of people in the United States are saying it, and questioning whether the media is uh, creating this fake news scandal in order to control people. And many of the people who are making these types of claims are people who distrust news, politics, uh, science. Right. Whereas when we're dealing with a pandemic, surely science and news are something which we really need to pay attention to. The I think it's like the sword in the second text, which is by uh, Jean-Luc Nancy. Uh, in the text, he says, is a reply. The only thing I know about John Nancy from the text is that apparently he's a professor of philosophy, I think, in the United States, California, I believe, and that he's French, and that him and Giorgio Agamben know each other from way back. So the second text that we look into uh, was written by Jean Luc Nancy, who is, and uh, Bill, can you tell us something about him? I know almost nothing about Jean Luc Nancy, apart from that he's a professor of philosophy, I believe, in California, in the United States. I think he's French originally, and seems to, from reading the text, he seems to know Giorgio Agamben from way back when. Uh, and that's all I know. In, in his text, he's looking into, he, he, he writes a reply to Agamben. He said, well, the crisis is not just an invention, it is something real that is happening. Also, replies to the question of when is the state of emergency justified. There's, it's only a very short text, it's two or three pages, and it's not very substantial. The, the main gist of the text is that Jean Luc Nancy is responding to what he's read, uh, as having been written by Giorgio Gambin, basically saying that there is an epidemic and we need to be careful. I don't, I don't think it's like deep theory in any sense. No, I think it's yeah, yeah I think it's calling calling out the Agamben for what he's saying to convey to his invention of an epidemic. It also made me think on how much of a yeah, that this state of emergency uh, comes out or, or begins when the bureaucracy cannot manage uh, as, as something that is unexpected. Like when have a complex situation uh, and the bureaucratic system, the state cannot handle it. And again, why is it justified then to deterrent? Why is it justified to have a state of emergency? Yeah. I guess something which I'm not sure about is that I don't know what the particular laws and regulations are in Italy and whether they're different to, for example, what they are in the UK or in Sweden or in Colombia. Because lockdown or quarantine or any of these different words that we seem to be using for what's going on at the moment in many places can imply widely different things. So when we're talking about a state of emergency as a state where there can be abuses of civil rights, it's not, I think there's different levels of how this can be the case in different places, although I haven't looked into it. Or right, we can have a situation like in, in Hungary where it appears that the government can have a situation like in Hungary where uh, the government has the law uh, allowed to have a state of emergency without an end date. So it really comes down to the, the constitutional rules of each country, how they're set, uh, what are the checks and balances within uh, those constitutions. The third text, well, which we're discussing today, is also by Giorgio Gambe. Uh, it was written at the start of March, I think the 11th of March, so that's approximately two weeks after the first text, and in between there's been this response from John and Nancy, and one might expect that a Agamben would say, okay, I respect your opinion, and so maybe mediate his, uh, his position a little bit, but it seems like in the second text he's actually kind of digging his heels in, and making a point that, no, uh, this is... This is a, a dangerous situation where um, where fear and panic is being spread 
um, perhaps the cause of that fear and panic is something invented in order to uh, exercise control over the population. He brings uh, a quotation about the plague uh, from the 1500s where uh, people were spreading um, the plague, right? So he describes this situation where people were uh, spreading the plague on the doors and uh, on purpose. On purpose trying to extend the contagion. Uh, this, second, this second text here, actually the name is Contagion, that would be the translation to English. And uh, what is what the, the, the question that I think is raising in this text is about uh, how uh, this perception of contagion has changed uh, social relations and how uh, it, it also presents an opportunity for state repression. In the sense that uh, he raises the question of when a person is uh, infected and can potentially infect other people, right? Uh, it's treated in the same way as uh, someone that is terrorist, right? And both could be put to jail, both can be fined, and we've seen this response in several countries, right? Where uh, it's a criminal offense to go to break quarantine. It is important when we're saying that the government can put into place certain rules and regulations, that we always look with a critical eye to make sure that things aren't being slipped through uh, when people are more concerned with coronavirus that will ultimately be harmful to people uh, and civil liberties. So I think, there's a, I think there's a useful point which we can get out of what the government is saying but I think the way in which he says it is too extreme and it doesn't allow for nuance. It says it's either this or this, where it's actually it's somewhere in the middle that this is a pandemic and it's also possible that governments can abuse the special privileges or rights which they take in order to deal with the pandemic. And no one really knows the extent of what should be done, or how far they should go with the measures. And so, in a way, yes, we need to comply with the regulations, with the, with the advice and recommendations from the authorities, but at the same time, we also need to be vigilant that this don't mean a power grab, or they don't they, that they come uh, with enough uh, strings attached so that uh, there are controls over uh, the power that is uh, being bestowed upon the government. Um, I, I guess that's it. I realize that we haven't really arrived at any conclusions and permanent conclusions because these problems are just too too big to arrive at any conclusions upon. Um, and also, I think it's probably the case that in a few months from now, the situation will be very different. So anything we say at this point could be open to major revisions. So uh, it will be interesting to see how this video looks in the light of <laughs> in two or three months. Right. Yes. Thank you, Phil, for coming today to our. Macamolia theory throwdown. Thanks.